Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'm going to continue the English series with the Anglo-Dutch or what to do when Black tries to play the Dutch against the English opening. Now, one thing I would like to say at the, st say at the start is that it doesn't work as well as against the main lines. I think Black has much better fighting chances if White at any point plays d4 in the opening because against the English you are fighting against what black is doing uh, by not playing d4. And what's the point? Well, f5 is a move that controls the e4 square. So in many variations of the Dutch, the e4 square is going to be problematic. We haven't played d4. We're going to play d3. So by leaving the option to defend the square, just black is deprived of the main advantage of the move f5. And also, uh, by having this English type of setup with the bishop on g2, we are going to be putting a ton of pressure on the light squares ourselves. Now, what we are usually going to be doing against the Dutch is the Botvinnik system type setup. So knight c3 with bishop g2 and then d3 e4. That's generally what we are going to be doing. We are going to be fighting against the Dutch by trying to play e4 simply because we can d3 e4 okay it, it's as simple as that we are going to look at three different setups for black the first setup uh, and a setup that i would like to mention first is the leningrad setup so where black plays g6 bishop g7 which is very likely going to transpose to either king's indian type of position uh, against the Botvinnik system, which we are going to cover soon, with an early f5. So imagine black playing d6 castles first and then f5 at some point. Or it can actually transpose to uh, several e5, c4, e5 positions uh, also if, if black achieves f5 later on. And against the Leningrad setup, we are going to play the Botvinnik system type of position with e4 okay the second type of setup is the classical dutch which to my mind really isn't good for black at all uh, what we are going to do as white is we are just going to storm the queen side gain a ton of space and say that this bishop is going to be extremely powerful now the downside of not playing d4 of playing d3 instead is of course that we allow the move e5 but i'm going to show you opportune moments to play d4 much later on to punish this and, and get a better position and then the final position uh, is the stone wall which i think is the only fighting defense for black against the dutch so here's my advice to stone wall players if you play the stone wall play it against the English as well. For other Dutch players who play the Leningrad or the Classical, don't play f5 against the English. Just, just don't. Find something else. It's not as good. And you're going to see why. Okay, let's start this position, uh, or this video, excuse me, by looking at the stone wall setup. As I said, <clears throat> that's going to be the best opening black can choose against our uh, setup. So we don't really want to go knight c3, knight f3, e3. That's not going to be a playable setup against the Dutch at all. We want to control the e4 square. So we're going to play d3, g3, bishop g2, controlling the light squared complex. So we always start with pawn to g3. Black plays knight f6. We're going into the stone wall. This can, of course, still be uh, the, the classical Dutch or uh, or the stone wall, we play knight f3 and black plays d5. And this should be the best uh, defense for black. Now, what are some important features of the stone wall Dutch? Well, black would like to control the e4 square. We haven't played d4, so we can set up with d3 controlling black's biggest outpost and then breaking the stone wall in the center of the wall with e4. So we're just, by playing the English against the stone wall, our aim is to break the wall 
through the center by, by playing e4. Okay, we castle. And now uh, it's important to understand that black needs to build the, the wall first before doing anything else. If black should start with the moves bishop e7 or bishop d6, which are sort of playable, uh, black is going to be in trouble very early on, and I'm going to show you how. Well, firstly, bishop d6 is a sideline that's simply not good. It's been played a bunch of times, but we're going to be punishing both bishop d6 and bishop e7 the same way. We take on d5, and of course black takes with the pawn. Taking with the knight wouldn't make any sense, leaving the weakness on e6 and blocking in the bishop. And once this is taken, we simply continue knight c3. And there is no way for punish us to punish us for leaving black with all of these weaknesses. So what black should do is castle and we go d3 and if if anybody is better it's white. White has the c-file to work with, white has amazing bishops and just a perfectly playable setup. Now d4 at any point is a move you need to consider. It simply does not work. In this position we can just take on d4. And it doesn't work against bishop e7 either, even though the queen defends, and I'm going to show you why. So we do the same thing against bishop e7, cd, ed, knight c3, and if they go d4, we simply go queen a4 check, and, and that's it. Which is why they have to play c6 before they develop the bishop. That's an important element, and it's also important in the normal stone wall. So c6, okay. Now we go d3, okay. Uh, and after d3, we don't really want to be playing for d4 at any point, and we don't have to play d4 because in the normal stone wall, when uh, we have a pawn on d4, black has dynamic chances. We don't want to allow that. So yeah. Now again, bishop d6 isn't really uh, a good option for black, even though it has been played many times. Th the reason is we're threatening e5 after our uh, e4 pawn break, so we just go knight c3. If black castles, we go e4, and once this is taken, uh, black is forced to play e5 or to take once more, leaving the weakness on e6. And if black is forced to play e5, then obviously this bishop isn't a good piece. So on d3, black needs to develop with bishop e7. And now I'm going to show you two different setups. Uh, one where you play for e4, playing for the Botvinnik system in a way. The difference is that the knight is, it's not a real Botvinnik system because the, the knight isn't on e2, but it's still very similar in terms of pawn structure. Uh, so one way of playing is knight c3 and e4. And the other way to play is actually to avoid that and go b3. And it's interesting, however, I believe that it's not as critical. So after castles, bishop b2, a5, let's say, a3, knight a6, knight bd2, uh, maybe knight g4, queen c2, uh, bishop f6. If this bishop can be exchanged, I'm really not a big fan of this position. And also, even though strategically it's good to trade off this bishop because that's black's best piece, at this point we really don't have any alternatives to playing d4 now that the knight has been sidelined. So I understand that white is slightly better and b3 isn't a, a bad setup, but I prefer what I'm about to show you now. So let's keep it simple. We want to play the Botvinnik with the knight on, on f3. So we go knight c3. Uh, you should never be afraid of, of dc, of course, Sa same as in the stone wall. Okay. Uh, now, some options by black are either castles or playing something crazy. By crazy, I mean d4. And this is going to be a reverse Benoni, basically. And in any reverse Benoni, where white is a tempo up, black cannot have a great position. Also, we have the immediate knight a4, Benko style, as, as we're going to see, where b5 doesn't work, of course. Uh, b5 just loses to c takes, c takes, and knight e5. 
So the knight cannot be captured. Black isn't threatening to win the knight. Uh, and if they go c5, which is the best move, preparing knight c6, uh, then we simply go a3 and b4. And on knight c6, we give up a pawn. Now, this is an engine idea. But when I was preparing the English against the Dutch, I wanted to prepare against d4 and transposing into the, into the Benoni. And this is an idea I came up with, and it does work. You can just do this. So b4, c, b, a, b. If knight takes pawn, then e3, and black's position is just going to collapse. The engine says plus 1.1. Now, if this is taken again, for example, queen takes, then we can exchange queens. We have knight b6 and bishop f4 later on. So this took a bit of engine preparation uh, from my part when I was preparing my repertoire in the English. But know that knight a4 is a good move. Mikhail Marin in his book says knight b1 and white is better. After knight b1, the engine says equal. Now I know that that book isn't wasn't written yesterday and maybe knight a4 wasn't an option then according to the engines but if you look deeply at this position knight a4 is a perfectly playable move which should give white a winning advantage actually and that makes d4 completely unplayable so remember d4 as a sideline okay and now uh, if they don't go d4 they're going to castle and now we play our idea e4 and this is uh, this is the starting position now of course white has a threat here and the threat is occupying the e5 square and black needs to fight against this which is why black either uh, plays d4 or takes on e4 black has to do something now if black plays a stupid move that does nothing like a6 our threat is take on f5 Take on f5, go rook e1 and bishop f4 and dominate e5. And positionally, this is going to be absolutely crushing. If we get a bind on the e5 square, black is never going to be able to develop this bishop. It's just going to be very hard to move any of the pieces. So our strategy behind e4 is to occupy e5, however strange that might seem. Now, <clears throat> black's options, as I said, are d4 and fe4. d4 I don't think is as challenging, because after knight e2, fe4, d4, you, you cannot really take the pawn, because now knight takes d4, and the engine says white is winning here, it's about plus 3 for white. I think that's exaggerating a bit, for example, bishop f6 bishop f4 we do have amazing control over all the squares but there's still work to be done and the knight is hanging of course so if we move our, our knight so the engine says against d4 white gets a winning advantage because this pawn cannot be captured it's true that white is better but I, it's not game over yet so f4 should be your choice as black f4 and now we always take with the pawn of course and you might be wondering well what about pawn takes on c4 or pawn takes on e4 well on pawn takes e4 we can simply go knight g5 and we get the pawn back and black is left with this dreadful weakness and on d takes c4 it's it's not wise to to grab this pawn and there have been a couple of games where white had convincing results. There have been draws as well. But our idea is going to be getting our knights to d4 and e4 and just making sure that black cannot move a single piece. Now, if they do this, then we just go queen e2. And we're threatening the pawn. So they have to do something. Uh, queen d3 is, is a possibility and if, if queen d3 is played then we can just take and on cd3 just knight e5 and we pick the pawn up and again white should be better so if they try to defend the pawn with b5 it's even worse just rook d1 queen e8 and e5 we've given up the d5 square but as I said we're gonna do this knight d4 knight e4 and black is going to struggle let's say b4 knight e4 
this bishop is extremely bad and we're gonna get our pawn back and then some so even though i feel like the stone wall is the best idea uh in the dutch against the english i still think white is better in all variations so i'm actually going to change what i said at the start of the video maybe you shouldn't play the dutch at all against the english i just don't find it comfortable Okay, now uh, let's have a look at the classical Dutch, which is going to be even simpler. Uh, if bishop e7 playing the classical, then castles, castles, knight c3, we're going to try to do the same thing. However, uh, if they go c6, weakening the d6 pawn, we're going to strike with e4 immediately. If they don't go c6, <clears throat> So they could go e5, exploiting the fact that we didn't play d4. Or they could go knight c6. We're going to do something different. We're going to attack the queen side so ferociously that black isn't going to have any time for king side play. So again, if c6, just go e4. Same type of setup. fe4, d4, and e5, and black is left with this, uh, which of course isn't good. We have a bind on the d5 square. We can go h3, bishop e3 with pressure on, on all of the dark squares and of course if the c pawn is ever provoked to move then we get the d5 square as well so i i think this is the best way to to play against c6 if they go knight c6 which is in the spirit of the normal classical dutch now uh knight c6 doesn't make as much sense if i'm going to be honest because Black plays knight c6 in the classical to prepare e5. You can just play e5 here. So, in my opinion, if you're going to play the classical setup, just play e5 on move 7 instead of knight c6. But okay, if they do play knight c6, then we go rook b1. And there is no way to prevent our attack. If they go a5, we go a3. a4 cannot be played. Uh, if queen e8, let's say they are going along with their classical Dutch plan of smashing us on the king side, which is b4, a b4, a b4, and e5. So black has achieved everything they achieve in the normal classical Dutch. But yeah, after now, b5, knight d8, I think it's obvious that white is better. Of course, white can still get mated on the king side. That That's not the point. You can always mess up. But this position is extraordinary for white. The, the engine says plus 0.7 something like that but i think it's more than that and we have so much space and this diagonal is so strong that in any end game there are going to be so many weaknesses that white's game is going to be much easier than black's okay and if they go e5 which i think is better than the knight c6 there's a downside to that as well we, we can just go b4 immediately we don't even need rook b1 and if they go queen e8 again continuing their classical dutch stuff then we go a4 and i really think they need to prevent us from moving forward so maybe a6 uh, is an option and now just bishop a3 and we're preparing to break this down completely and as you can see black pieces still haven't been developed i think Playing the classical Dutch against uh, the English is just not, not a good idea. If you're gonna go for, for the Dutch, as I said, the stone wall, but yeah, okay. Now let's move on to the Leningrad, which I think, which I think is more promising. Uh, but as, as I said before, it is going to transpose to many different openings. So you're gonna be seeing this uh, in other videos some positions from this one but i think it's important to show them against the dutch specifically because dutch players who play the leningrad need to know don't need to know what happens if they start with one c5 or one e5 or, or whatever but again it's going to resemble king's indian types of positions where black gets in an early f5 okay against this uh we play knight c3 they go bishop g7 and our idea is of course control over the light squares and we're going to play the botvinnik uh, type system so d3 die castle 
we go e4 and notice how we did not play knight f3 uh, early on so against the leningrad type of setup we are actually going to go for the normal botvinnik system because this is going to be almost identical to the king's indian <coughs> for black uh, and we are going to have a look at a couple of different options so uh, against e4 uh, black can either take the pawn or play d6 those are going to be the main differences so either taking or not taking Okay, and also uh, after d3, black can choose to play d6 or castles or e5. Uh, inevitably, all three moves are going to be played at some point, so I'm not sure the transpositions are as important. One minor thing is that after d6 straight away, black can uh, aim for a setup with an early knight c6, but again. I think e5 is going to be played at some point. And you can see that this resembles a King's Indian where uh, black has managed to, to push f5 through. Well, let me show you that. Uh, so, for example, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, g3. Uh, let's say knight f6. Let's just keep it simple. Bishop g2, castles, uh, e4 by white, d6 by black, knight g2 c5, d3 or castles, doesn't really matter, they go knight c6, we go d3, and when they get their knight out of the way, for example knight e8, and for example bishop e3, and at some point they, they play f5 and bring the knight back, that's going to be very similar to the positions we look at in the Dutch. Okay, so they could go d6, they could go e5, they could castle, uh, they are all going to be played eventually. Okay, so castles, e4. Now, as I said, the main branching is whether black takes on e4 or not. Let's look at positions where black doesn't take first. So let's say play, they play d6, we go knight g2. And now it's possible for black to go e5 or knight c6. One thing I would like to mention is that when black plays c6, we take on f5. Okay, that's a rule because uh, I'm, I'm going to show you what the, what the point is. We're going to be trying to prepare the move d4 in, in those positions. So once c6 is played, we're going to take on f5 and aim to play d4. So let's have a look at e5 first, which makes most sense. Castles and now c6. Okay, so we take on f5. It can be taken with the bishop or with the pawn. Uh, against both, we're just going to go d4. So let's say pawn takes, which is more in the King's Indian slash Dutch style, d4. Okay. Now, if this is taken, obviously these are weaknesses, so black needs to do something else. Most players with black play the move knight a6 to develop here, although it is possible to play bishop e6 or knight bd7 or, or queen e8. But it doesn't matter, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, so let's say knight a6. We can go b3, solidifying uh, our pawn chain, and if black goes e4 at any point, we are going to go bishop g5 and d5. That's going to be our idea. Cementing our pawn on d5, getting control over the d5 square, it is true that we unleash this bishop, but our position is going to be more pleasant with a ton of space and with a weakness on d6. The same thing goes for bishop takes f5. So bishop takes f5, we go d4. Let's say they go knight a6 again. Bishop g5, let's say queen d7 and d5. This is what you're trying to achieve. Okay, You're trying to uh, cement black's pawn structure in the center so that, so that you could target it later. So if they don't take the pawn, it means they're going to go d6, c6, e5. When they play c6, take on f5, and your plan is bishop g5, d5. I think that should be simple enough. However, most people are going to take, so f takes e4. Now, the rule is we always take with the pawn, always. And we play our normal 
but Vinix system, which again is going to be covered in detail in the video on the King's Indian against the English because that's the main position. But if you put a pawn on f7 here, that is the King's Indian. So this is the reason we play the Botvinnik against this. The general rule is whenever black plays a fianchetto, the Botvinnik is good. Whenever the bishop can come to c5, the Botvinnik is not good. Okay, c5, and obviously this is the same thing I tried to enter from the King's Indian. Let me show that to you again. So here, it's the same thing. It's just that black is mi missing the f pawn. That's the only difference. So if they play the Dutch and they play the Leningrad, you're going to be playing the Botvinnik against the King's Indian defense without the pawn on f7. So we are going to be transposing uh, in, in many cases to either 1c5 or 1e5 or 1g6 or 1 knight f6. Okay, so we castle, they go knight c6, h3. It's important to give our bishop the option to go to e3 without knight g4. And it's also important to control the g4 square in general and e5. Okay, and as in all Botvinnik systems, and again, I'm going to be focusing on this a lot more in the King's Indian video. Uh, this symmetrical pawn structure in the center means that both sides have pawn breaks. One upside of the Dutch is that black no longer has f5. We've traded the d pawn for the f pawn, so that's not an option for black. But we do have f4, and both sides have b5, b4. So all three of these pawn breaks are going to be important. In this case, of course, f4 can just be played immediately, so it's the best move. And just remember the thematic pawn breaks, and remember that you can always occupy the d5 square with your knight. That's almost never a mistake. So, for example, if bishop e6 targeting your pawn, then knight d5. Also note that black shouldn't really ever take on f4. Um, we take with the bishop and we put pressure on the d6 pawn. It is also possible to take with the pawn, I think, but it's way too risky. The engine says bishop takes, then knight takes, then pawn takes, and black is slightly better. So I don't think we need to go king's Indian style. We just take with the bishop and start asking questions. So again, against g6 setups, which are going to be similar to the king's Indian, we play the normal Botvinnik. Okay? Against the stone wall, we play the Botvinnik, but with the knight on f3. Against the classical, we just go b4, a4, b5, claim space on the queen side, and, and we're just better. So I think this is going to be the simplest video in the English series. And my conclusion is that black should not play the Dutch against the English. I'm sorry if that disappoints you Dutch players, but do something else. Thank you for watching. Hope you got something from the video. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye. P.S. I just noticed that I didn't caps the letters with L in the Leningrad. Sorry about that. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.